Welcome to About the Winelands. In this show, we will be chatting to leaders, influencers, wine producers, restaurants, and other role players. Tune in every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday for your latest episodes. You will find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram TV, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Before we start the show, I need to share something really exciting. It's called the About the Winelands pop-up. And if you want to get your customers excited about your lockdown or online specials, you need to email us right now. Email us at visitthewinelands at gmail.com and add Winelands pop-up to the subject line. Who knows? We might just make you an offer you cannot refuse. That is, visit the winelands at gmail.com. Now, on with the show. Good day, everyone. Today I'm speaking to Lisa from Lisa Loves Wines. Um, and um, welcome, Lisa, to About the Winelands. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the invite. So, Lisa, tell me, how are you enjoying your lockdown period? Are you having a good time? Well, to be honest with you, I'm enjoying the two hours extra a day. It's um, quite refreshing. A wake, to wake up refreshed every morning is, is, is a nice thing. Um, I've never been a morning person, so, well, that's, that's quite nice. And otherwise, I must be honest with you, I enjoyed the time with my kids mm -hmm. and my family. It was all an unusual experience, something we most probably will never have again. But I think it can slowly but surely come to an end now. <laughs> I'd love to go walk on the beach and go back into the winelands. Uh, I miss it. I miss it terribly. So, talking about the winelands, how did you get involved in the wine industry? I went to Stellenbosch University. Oh, that's a good <laughs> no, way to start, uh, right? Yes, I think so too. Yes, uh, a university in the winelands. You know, so it's um, everyone was sort of involved in the wine industry. No, um, seriously, I, uh, at that stage, I was um, romantically involved with um, which, the person who is my husband now. And he was a, a winemaker. And um, all the events we went to, everything was, was around wine. And um, it, was, it united us because it, it meant pe meeting people, um, eating great food, and having great moments together. And, and we, just, we just loved it. It was a, it was, it was a nice um, industry to be in. And it uh, involved and connected a lot of different types of people. So it, it was lovely. That's how, how it started. And um, he then moved uh, to Germany as a flying winemaker. And after my studies, I also went to Germany and um, stayed there for over 18 years before coming back to South Africa. Um, but because I studied politics um, and multicultural relations, my partner was, was stationed in, in a very small remote little town with only one, one uh, employer, which was at that stage, the large, largest wine producer in Europe. It was also the only place I would be able to, to work. So uh, that's, that's how I got into the wine industry itself. I, I started to work for, for this wine producer. And then um, once I returned to South Africa, um, I, um, that's how I created Lisa Loves Wines. I started Lisa Loves Wines with, with the experience that I had in the industry in Europe. Well, that's awesome. So, so I mean, you've been um, in the wine industry for, for quite a while. So, um, and also you, I mean, you speak different languages. Which languages do you actually speak? Um, I speak uh, Italian, um, French, uh, German, and a bit of Spanish, as well as Afrikaans. Afrikaans is my mother language. Amazing. So, um, yeah. Lisa, yeah. Lisa Loves Wine started as a tour business, am I right? Yes. Well, I, I worked in the wine industry before, so when I came back uh, to South Africa, I initially looked for, for work in the industry. But it really bothered me to think that I would be spending so much time in an office under a roof within four walls, uh, or, you know, or traveling again, which I didn't want to travel again at that stage. I wanted to stay put. So, um, you know, it started by chance, really, as it so often does. And... Um, one tour guide actually in a coffee shop recommended an institute where I could get myself qualified, qualified. and that's where I started to, to freelance as a tour guide. And um, 
I then started Lisa Loves Wines uh, as a company offering wine tours because that was in everything my background. And I just enjoyed it so much to be back in South Africa and the winelands. I wanted to, to share this joy, you know. Um, often people who live in their own country, inhabitants or locals of such absolute beauty are sometimes oblivious, you know, they're oblivious to the grandiose mountain backdrops, the sea views, the landscape, the wildlife. And that you can enjoy all of this while softly sipping wine in the sun. I mean, it's like gorgeous, it's simply stunning. So I, um, I wanted to, in, to enjoy it. I wanted to experience it um, more. And um, yeah, but the wine tours, they were just the start of it all. Uh, Lisa Loves Wine's goal is to be a, a platform where people can connect and learn and um, a platform where there is a, a cultural exchange, you know, um, and uh, enjoying authentic uh, cultural experiences. Um, yeah, so that's that's the, the beginning of um, Lisa Loves Wines was actually just showing the world what the Cape is all about. But in, in the future, I hope to show the Cape what the world is all about in, in terms of wine. So that's, that's the next challenge. So you can watch the space. Well, oh, that's interesting. So, Lisa, what makes your, I mean, uh, why, why would I come on your wine tour? What makes your wine tours different to other people's wine tours? Well, they, um, they're very personal. They're um, authentic. They're in the tourist's home language. And uh, Lisa Loves Wines can relate back to the tourists uh, in the term that the tourist might understand and know because of my, my experience in um, in Europe and the mindset of the European consumer and uh, also the wine consumer uh, for which, uh, in, in which I work, in the milieu in which I worked and um, as, a, as a brand manager and uh, in marketing and sales. So it's, it's a different type of um, tour if you can relate back to where the tourists come from now. Well, that's interesting. So, um, are you currently, when people come on the tour, do you personally take them on the tour? Yeah. Yes, I, at this stage, I, I, um, I do it personally. Well, at the moment, not because of the virus. Funnily enough, um, the virus is, well, my industry is wine and tourism, and both of them are pretty much um, kaput now in, uh, in lockdown. But when I do tours, I, I do it personally. Uh, it's all uh, hands on. Um, and uh, yes, what people appreciate is the, the knowledge of, of, of wine, you know, as I said, in, in the language of origin and uh, the personal nature. I think people appreciate uh, an authentic experience. And I also visit uh, um, wineries that, not, not one of the more wineries, smaller wineries or, or just unknown wineries. You know, each winery has, has a story to tell. So um, that's that's what makes it a bit different. Well, that's that's very nice. I mean, that's that's our our um, you know yeah. aim is to tell the, the story of the wine. Yeah. That's, yeah. I quickly want to share something exciting. I have heard via the grapevine that the Fishwives Club will be launching a new lifestyle club soon. If you have not heard of the Fishwives Club yet, just know that you are probably missing out on the sexiest wine label out there. To stay in the loop please quickly go and follow them on Instagram. The Instagram handle is at the Fishwives Club Lifestyle. Let me repeat that, at the Fishwives Club Lifestyle. Now, on with the show. So, um, Lisa, you're, in terms of any other services you offer or you're yes, planning yes. to offer, can you expand on that now or is it, are you going to keep it a secret for, to a later date? Uh, it's a little bit, well, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit fresh, um, okay. but I'm super excited about it. Um, it's, uh, so I'm, I'm going to reveal it. It's, I, I would like to offer a platform for other wines, you know, um, for people in Cape Town who are interested in wines. I, I find that there's, um, there's a lack of accessible Europe, European and other world wines in, um, in South Africa. And I would like that to be, that will be my next project because I'm literally sitting at the source um, of a whole network of producers in, in the world that, that um, 
offer wonderful value for money and uh, are unknown. And I think uh, the South African wine connoisseur is appreciative enough um, of you know, good, good quality wines that do not need to be a brand or um, a well-known brand or, or wine. I think um, South African palates are evolved enough to be able to appreciate lesser known, good value for money wines. And I would like to, to, to import these and offer a platform, not only to, to taste the wines, but to experience them as a um, cultural offering, you know, with, 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 um, with food and um, just go on to see how it develops with maybe, you know, for example, if you do sherry, then you might have um, a, um, a flamenco player or, um, you know, you do sort of um, a pop-up uh, system where you, for one month, you, you, you showcase uh, sherry and the region sherry and the culture of sherry, the food. Uh, of Jerez and uh, the next month you do the south of France but with with brands that you, you might not know and um, are still great value for money. Um, uh, I, I look forward to partner with someone in the future and um, and offer this right here and especially now after Corona that might where people might not be able to or do not want to travel uh, to these countries then um, offering them right here these experiences right here might be might be very interesting. I just wanted to ask you about that. I mean, I think it's a fantastic idea, and I wanted to. I wondered if you're planning collaboration with um, some local mm -hmm. partners or even other producers locally. That I think personally that um, you know, for 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 somebody here to in South Africa to appreciate their own produce and and, and our own um, wines, we need to expand our horizons and taste other stuff as well. So so yeah, I think that is absolutely a fantastic idea. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I have no uh, with other individuals, yes, but not with not with wineries uh, uh, at this stage. No. Okay, that's because, interesting. Because um, I would be um, strictly speaking, not um, not a competition to them, but it would also be interest. Well, funnily enough, the the winemakers in the region, all the people, the producers in the region, they all import wines from all over the world to be able to benchmark their own problem products. Because course, that's yes. the one thing that's missing in South Africa is that. Uh, we, we have every you know in, in European countries or in, in Germany where I, uh, I, I lived before you have everything on offer you have every country on offer and the countries um, compete with compete with one another on the shelf whereas here we only have um, generally speaking South African wines and um, I think people are open to to, to, to new tastes and um, new backgrounds and uh, new cultures um, and it's, it's just a question of um, of getting the right entry point, you know, because uh, the, there's a misconception that overseas wines are extremely expensive, but that is, in fact, because it's always the brands that we see, and not necessarily mm. the plain one of the mill wines that are excellent uh, quality and uh, good value for money. And this is what what I would like to showcase. Well, that's amazing. So. Lisa, as a as a as a wine um, tour guide and also with your your business, Lisa Love Wines, and your presence online, you're becoming an influencer in the wine industry. So, if a wine producer or a wine estate is sitting there and thinking, "I want to get more people to me," how do they get your attention? What do they need to do? It's so easy, you know. All you all producers are unique. They all offer a, a story to tell, and I and I enjoy hearing all of them. Uh, um, my main uh, media platform is Instagram at the moment. I just enjoy the simplicity of, of, of pictures, videos, uh, and a few words. And um, each, this is, this is the thing that, that I particularly, as, as, you know, as with people, wineries, producers, each winery or producer has a specific angle and, and uh, a specific story to tell. And I think that I'm quite good at Finding that story and um, and portraying it it's an authentic story, not necessarily that which uh, most marketers uh, tap into, where you need a lot of money. I, I, I don't believe in that. I believe in in finding that story or that angle which everyone has, because all wineries are unique, all producers are unique. Uh, finding that story, and it's not an expensive thing, and then to 
speak of that and reveal that to the world. And uh, I think that's what makes uh, Lisa Lavoine unique, is the capacity to see that in uh, a producer or in a winery. That sounds awesome. So we, you've mentioned the coronavirus and, you know, like you said, it's, it forces everyone to rethink their business models. Um, I like your idea of, 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 you know, bringing the world to South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any other changes or ideas for your business in mind? Um, and do, yeah. you have any, do you have any um, ideas for maybe for your producers as well on what they can do while they, you know, stuck in, this, in a system where they can't really accept visitors to their, to their place? You know, it's it's. I I think this is a wonderful opportunity to to engage with your um, with your customers with with your public um, in uh, an interesting. Yeah, well, as I, I always say it again, but in an authentic manner to find your um, what is your unique offering, and um, that uh, th that I find very important for all producers uh, is to find that and to showcase it. Um, but the way that the world of tourism will change, at least, is that. I think we're going to have to focus a lot on, on local tourism and mm -hmm. um, engage um, our own people, you know, and that's going to be important for, for wineries and producers to find a way how to attract them. Um, I, I envisage like family reunion packages, you know, where people can, can come out to the winelands to a place that they maybe don't know and sit around a fire and, and, drink wine and enjoy each other's company as a family where they feel safe and, and secure. And that's going to be very important after the corona that people feel safe um, and feel that, uh, that things are clean and that it's, um, they can be sure that, that um, they, they are, the chances are very small that they will contract the virus because that's uh, something that's on everyone's mind. Awesome, that sounds like a very good idea. Um, so Lisa, your wine journey has been interesting. So what is the most important thing that you've learned from your wine journey? That most people in the world have the same idea about life, love and laughter. We can sit, all sit around a table and enjoy each other's company, all of us, mostly. It's rare really that, that people are utterly unenjoyable. All we need is a, a table and a glass of wine <laughs> and a platform to connect. That's interesting. So on that note, can you give us your very own wine quote? Yes, yes. Um, wine and vines are, are very much like people. Those that struggle or make, uh, or make an effort in life are far more interesting and have more character than those who do not. Awesome. That's my finding, yes. That's, that's very good. Lisa, um, how do, if people want to get hold of you, um, how do they find Lisa's wines? How do they find you? Um, on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, uh, those are the platforms that I am keeping up to date. Uh, I'm restructuring my website as everyone else is doing in uh, the corona time. Um, and my website will be live within the next month. Um, I'll have my new website up. Awesome. We'll put the links, all the links down in the description. Lisa, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time speaking to us. And um, I'm sure our listeners will find this interesting. Yes, thank you. And thank you. Yeah, I know you're busy. So um, thank Excellent. you for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting our show. If you would like to get more exposure for your business, please have a look at our sponsorship options. Thanks again for supporting About the Winelands. Please follow us on YouTube and on our social media channels. All details and links are in the description.